to another Ooh. episode of uh, Geek Dad Reports Quarantine Special. I think we're going to call this one Phase 2. Yeah. Or if you're in Philadelphia area, um, yellow. Phase yellow. Or if so. you're in Florida, you're at Phase like 7 and you're about to go to Phase negative 7 and maybe yeah. never see the light of day again. Yeah. They're in Phase um, hell. They're in, well, th- I mean, them in Arizona are, are officially in Phase we're Republican ran states and we don't give a fuck. Yeah, they're they're on the biblical stages at this point. I have been. So, I don't I don't know how your lockdown's been. Your corner your your you, social distancing, but I've been spending it with time with my new friend. Do you do you guys just like cuddle with each other? I mean he mostly Who's, just like lifts his hand when he wants yeah. things. But let me tell you something. Oh. What do you want? What do you want? I like the eyes on that thing. Let me tell you something. If you don't give, if you don't give the child the asset, what he wants, make him raise his arm. Gets a little, gets a little choky. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Well, like I said, everyone, welcome to uh, I don't know Geek Dad Reports Phase Two. We just wanted to do a fun little show where we could check in with each other and with everybody else and see how you guys are doing during our fun, I don't know, coronavirus pandemic that we are all living through. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks, and Brian and I got to like. You know, we still chat every day on the messenger, but you know, it's different when you get to finally, you know, get that yeah, visual. We get to see each other, and I mean, to be fair, you know, we've I know we've talked about restarting our weekly show or every other week or whatever, but there's just nothing to talk about right now. Everything yeah. is literally like everything's been canceled. Everything has been moved. Things are kind yeah. of reopening, but like I went out to dinner the other day. Um, and you go to a restaurant, it was really weird. Everybody looked like they were doing something really like bad. Like they were guilty. Like they were stealing something. Cause everybody just sat at the table kind of, and you got disposable menus. Like you go into a section of 10 tables. There's only two tables that can be in use. Yeah. And, you know, everybody's yeah. wearing like full body hazmat suits to bring you your food. And pretty much like the rest of the world is like almost like put out all the fires, but America is like still on fire. We're throwing gasoline on the fire. America. Yeah, pour gasoline on ourselves. What? And then the world's like, you know what? I think we might just need to, like, you know, put a wall around America. Mm hmm. And that way, you know, we're, we don't go out and, like, Dude, you know, listen to everybody else. I've got a couple trips planned at the end of the year that we were hoping we we're going to be able to take, but I'm starting to worry that other countries are going to not let Americans in. That's pretty much what it's looking like it's going to happen. Yeah, I'm like. It's you know whatever I but I don't want to talk about the coronavirus. Everybody knows. Patience, Brian. Everybody knows that we are in the shit and that it's the second wave is coming. At least everyone who pays attention and isn't in fucking denial about life. Uh, which you know reminds me when I went out to dinner, it's always great. We're eating dinner, and you know it's like at the stores. There's always one person or one family who thinks this is all a big hoax, and they're sitting there like this is stupid. Why can't we just have regular menus? And they're like, um, well, this is the new guidelines. Well, that's just stupid. I want a regular menu. Go home. We're, America is not going to have two waves. It's going to be one 18-month wave. Yeah, we're going to be surfing the world's largest coronavirus wave. It's whatever. It's it's Honestly, it's exhausting. I'm just... But, Brian... We're fighting an uphill battle, battle, Ryan. <laughs> Yeah, before we get too depressed, yeah. how was your Father's Day, Brad? My Father's right? Day was good. Thank you for asking. Yeah. You're such a good friend. Um, yeah, it was fun. I mean, we um, you know, didn't really do much. We uh, Here in Washington, we're in phase two. Well, at least my county is. And so it means you can kind of gather with some family and stuff. So we went over to my father, went over to my in-law's house, and, and he barbecued chicken. And we just kind of hung out and played some croquet and ate and – Croquet, that sounds like a very Father's Day. It was a very, uh, dude, it was the, you should see my outfit too. I wore like a most Father's Day button up, like it's like a Star Wars like shirt and buttoned it up. I was looking real, real fine. Did you roll up the pant sleeves when you're? No, when dude, you're I, I definitely rolled up these arm. I rolled up my arm sleeves, like so I was wearing like a blue undershirt like this one and I had like my Star Wars shirt over it and I rolled it up tight like this so I had a yeah. double shirt. I was like, what's up? Kiss the guns, nice. yo. <laughs> No, so we went, we just had we just barbecued, hung out, and then um, we came home and watched watched a family movie. Um, we've been watching the rewatching the Marvel movies, but we'll we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. It's low key. My family, like I said, they got me my new my new best friend. 
Baby Yoda. Do do you does your wife let you um let him sleep in the bed with you guys or let let me? Yeah. Baby Yoda is part of the family. He sleeps where he wants to, or else he puts his little hand up like this, and then you stop breathing. <laughs> Very dangerous, dangerous yeah. addition to the family. Um, and then they got me some cool, you know, dad shirts that says like, I got one that says Yoda, best dad in the world, and it's got Yoda on there. <laughs> and they got me a really cool RTD2 waffle maker. I think that I think people have come to I think people have come to realize that I'm a big uh, Star Wars fan. That's weird. Everybody gets me Star Wars stuff now. Nice. But oh. uh, ever since I got the tattoo, people just assume that all I care about Star Wars. I mean, it's partially true. Kind of mostly yeah. true. Just because I only play Star Wars video games and watch Star Wars movies and dress in Star Wars t-shirts and have a Star Wars tattoo and have Star Wars under ruse does not mean that I only like Star Wars. Hold on your Star Wars lightsaber. Where's it at? I had to, you know what? I had to get rid of some of my, my plastic ones, man. The batteries. People replace batteries in your devices because after a while they go bad and then they ruin everything stupid yeah so what was it it was like no it was just it wouldn't light up and i opened it up and just battery acid was all like inside of it i'm like Uh. yeah whatever uh you know i was really hoping to have my own cool lightsaber but you know fucking disneyland still shut down and it's probably gonna be shut down even longer nothing is ever gonna fucking open i want everybody right now who's like oh maybe in august no movies aren't coming back Fucking theme parks aren't opening. Nothing is going to happen until we get a fucking vaccine or, like, a treatment. Nope. And I can't wait for the vaccine because then you're going to get a third of Americans be like, you're not going to stick that shit in my body. How do I know Bill Gates isn't a conspiracy to put microchips in my dick? There's yeah. no fucking conspiracy to put a microchip in your dick. Well, on the other hand, I had a good Father's Day. Oh, good. Yeah. How was your Father's Day? My father day was fun. We uh we played Rummy Cube, which is one of my favorite games. Nice. Does that involve uh, rum? Uh, no. Oh. The tiles, the one with all the, the little tiles. Oh, that's and you cool. gotta match the numbers and colors. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, we we played a bunch of that. Smart people uh, games. Mostly just kinda hung out and uh my son and I did some magic. We we've been kinda getting back into magic. Whoa, whoa you guys whoa, you guys did magic, like real magic? Yeah, well, you know, like I said, I'm working on my Jon Snow hair. So, are you more like a Harry Potter wizard, or you, you? I mean, you, you're like a real nerdy, like Gandalf wizard, right? You guys wear robes and have giant staffs. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of a, a battle mage. Yeah, you know, I, I got, I, I do a fight, and then I'll punch you, and then I'll burn your face. So off. you have like ro- long robes, but you also may have some like chain mail. Yeah, underneath mean? basically, right. or like a like a light leather kind of like a hardened leather, like Ooh. reinforced leather Ooh. maybe. Well, this is so. getting sexy. Tell me more, Ryan. <laughs> All black, Ooh, black, black leather with chain mail. Do you have like the leather where the nipples are cut out and they stick yeah, through the no chain underwear mail? though. I love it. I just go free it and free just, ball. Ooh, free ball it under your under your fucking dress. Yeah. I love it. But uh, no, it, it was it was a pretty chubby laugh. We went. Um, I, I wanted my favorite Indian food place because uh, they had a nice Father's Day deal going. Uh, so had some really good spicy Indian food. Uh, my kids got me the new uh, Chuck Wendig book, The mm-hmm. Wander. Uh, this is I'm about 50 pages in. And it's really 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 cool. Uh, my son, you know, like I said, we're big nerds, so he got me a brand new dice bag. I've got metal dice. Oh, look how sh- it's so shiny. Look at that. So shiny. I and they're like, like nice and heavy. And when you roll them, they make a cool, you know, like a nice, good thud sound. You're really so, good at funneling those dice, man. Yeah. Well, it's, and the bag is pretty good. It's, it's like actual leather. I mean, it's pretty nice. Looks so like my a, daughter look, looks like a sna- It looks like a dragon's ball sack. So. And then, and then my wife got me um, like uh, a really cool spiffy uh face uh, uh shaving cream like and then like a face moisturizer okay apparently there's something wrong with my Let's face say, is your wife trying to tell you something She's yeah like, listen I, listen for father's day i want you to tell you that you've gotten real like, old that, like my skincare is not good enough on my face and this was her subtle way of telling me that i needed to get yeah some face she's trying to tell you that in addition to your dice that your face also yeah. looks like a dragon's ball sack yeah and then and then it came with a, a re- 
uh, a coupon for you know facial reconstruction sir <laughs> uh, wow. picture Just gonna get of some a new possible outcome so yeah other than that it was a pretty chill wow just remember your safe word dude <laughs> jesus <laughs> Now, this is all you get. Mm. Nice. That sounds like fun. Yeah. It was good. It was good. We hung out, just watched movies and stuff like that, which I'll talk about soon. So, yeah, we, we got, uh, some, got some fun stuff to talk about. Today. Yeah, we're, me and Ryan are teasing so. a little bit because we, uh, we, fig- we figured for tonight it'd be actually kind of fun to get and kind of get involved, everybody, since we haven't talked to anybody in a long time. And so we put out a question. A question post and uh, asked you guys what you wanted to talk about and uh, everyone gave us some cool comments and and questions so uh, it seems like the running theme was everybody wanted to talk about what they've been watching or what they should be watching during quarantine so which is, i mean it's kind of fitting there's no movie theaters there's not a lot to do i mean even though some things are open there's not like a lot to go do and even if you can go do it with uh corona cases skyrocketing do you really want to go out and like hang out in groups of people again uh, probably not. So staying at home is about your safest option. And, and as Brian knows that you can pretty much have a, a in theater experience within your living yeah. room. Dude, yeah. this, uh, I will say that because my, all my trips have been canceled and I've gotten that money back. I have not done wise things with it, like reinvest it or save it for later. I have decided that since I've owned your 401k. I have decided and since I you reinvested it, and so you could compound that money with that listen, interest. Listen, everybody knows that a home sound system and TV entertainment system is a much better investment than stocks right now. I mean, come on, <laughs> duh. Yeah. Well, the stock market is kind of a little overpriced at this point. So yeah, you you would pay like three thousand dollars for like one stock. <laughs> no, well, we okay, so. What we're beating around the bush to is I upgraded my entire entertainment system. Uh, one of the things I've realized since while I've been sitting at home is that uh, if I'm going to be home for an entire year and I'm going to watch movies on my uh, on my home entertainment system, I really need to upgrade. And uh, and so I did. I bought a new LG Nano Cell TV. It's big. It's beautiful. Uh, it's not like one of those five thousand dollars TVs. It's kind of that middle ground TV, yeah. but it's really cool. Um, and I bought it. Well, actually. I bought a TV that I really liked, and then I had to return it because I bought myself a new Sonos Arc. So I've been looking for a sound system for a long time. And, um, you know, anybody's ever looked for sound systems, you have these, there's, there's, you have two options. You either go kind of cheap and just get like a, you know, $200 in the box. It's got a subwoofer, a sound bar. It sounds, you plug it mm-hmm. in, it works easy, and it sounds okay. Or yeah. you start getting into it's like better than a TV like built in audio. Yeah, I mean it's gonna be louder, it's gonna be clearer, um, you know, you're gonna get a little sub bass and, and some of them sound pretty decent, you know, two, three hundred bucks you can get something pretty good. But I already have had those and I was looking for something a little more high end. Um, but the problem is is you start looking at seven, eight hundred, a thousand dollar systems, you know, are you really gonna spend do you really wanna spend a thousand dollars on like a Samsung system or would you rather go with something like a Bose? Or a Sonos, or something that's you know gonna gonna be awesome. So I've been looking around for sound systems, and I heard a demo of this new system out called Dolby Atmos. Um, it's like Dolby Surround Sound. We've probably all heard of Dolby 5.1. Um, it's the next iteration of that. So basically, they 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 take all the signals and they send them out to individual speakers. So only a handful of of sub or, uh, sound bars even do this now. And uh, I found out Sonos was coming out with a brand new one. Uh, like two weeks ago, that was going to be a Dolby Atmos, right? And so I'm like, screw it. I might have been drinking one night, and I might have pre-ordered it, and I got it. But well, anyway, it's on its way. On its way, I'm looking at reviews of it, and I find out that the TV I have is not compatible with my new soundbar. So luckily, I bought my TV from Costco because I take my 75-inch Samsung back. And do you still have the box and stuff? Nope. They'll take it back without a box. I take this TV in. That was the most like scary moment of my life is taking this well, TV I, I would not, in the back would, of my truck. You put like pillows or something. I like, put around blankets it. over it and I'm like, I hope a bird doesn't dive on this thing. Anyway, so I get it to Costco. They refund me my money. I found the TV that I liked. There's a tiny bit more money. Uh, I found one that works with the, the, the my Sonos. But anyway, so I get it home. I set it all up. And I will say anybody does get the new Sonos Arc or any other of these um, 
Dolby Atmos surround sounds. There is a little bit of confusing setup involved with your TV and having to program everything pro- properly. And but uh, mm-hmm. but I'm telling you, man, it is incredible. So I got that, and then I got a couple of Sonos surround sound speakers. Uh, I will say this: anybody who's ever thought about Sonos, holy shit, it is. Inc- their speakers are incredible. Their new ones are incredible. The Arc is the best sound bar I've ever heard in my life. Um, yeah. The ease of use of it, I don't want to turn this into a Sonos ad. They're definitely not sponsoring us. But, like, you can, from your app, you can control all your speakers. You can group them all together. So, like, I had some people over, a few, a couple friends, and we just were listening to music outside. And so I just put it on, and all throughout the house, it was playing the same song at different levels. So when you're walking in, it just sounds like it's playing everywhere. It doesn't sound like there's any one source. It's just playing everywhere. Yeah. And it's uh, or you can just control one speaker or two speakers. Um, when you when you first hook in the the, the Sonos, you don't, it doesn't come with a remote control because it automatically works with whatever you want to work it with, or you can control it from your phone. That's pretty sweet. And so is is it is a sound bar, and then it has. Uh, like smaller speakers or so, okay so the sound bar comes this is where sonos does get you is is they only sell them individually now you can get some deals like you can get the, um, the two pack of speakers or like 300 bucks at, at costco so you can save like a hundred dollars on those um mm-hmm. and uh, but the but the the the, the sound bar itself is like 7.99 it doesn't come with anything but the sound bar um you yeah. have to buy the subwoofer separately which that's not it's on back order so i'm not getting it till july so i won't be able to give a full review of the house rattling bass yet because i don't have it but even without that it's incredible like you it, you have pretty good bass that comes through the bar but anyway so i just all i did was i took the two back speakers i put them in different spots in my house and i paired them with my sound bar and it gives me surround sound oh, okay but what's that's really pretty- cool is so the 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 the, the sonos uh, the arc has like up firing speakers down firing speakers and speakers speakers from the side so like when a plane we were watching star wars and it literally sounds like a tie is going over your head nice yeah and so they it's it it is incredible even my like my family who doesn't really care about sound they're just like oh this sounds good they're like <laughs> they were like wow i didn't know that made that noise right you can literally hear blasters being shot or individual yeah. grass you know like when the, the like when the wind goes over the grass and it makes that sound you're right you know or, or something you didn't you don't realize how much sound affects the movie and how much sound goes into the movie until you have something like this that can distribute yeah. that sound the way it's supposed to and you're just like I my friend like I said it was over the other day I, I showed him the sound bar and he sat there and he goes I literally now have to get one of these and rewatch every movie I've ever seen and I'm like I know yeah. that's the way I feel <laughs> so like we've been um, you know I know this is kind of stepping on the toes a little bit of one of our questions but um, you know, one of the things I've been doing during quarantine is me and the family decided to rewatch the Marvel movies, um, in chronological order. So if you go on IMDB or if you know me or Ryan, if you just want to send us a message, I'd be more than happy to send you the, the list. Um, it basically breaks down the movies in the, in the order of which they would play, you know, naturally timeline. So not the order they came out in the theater. So like, for instance, the first movie is Captain America. The second movie is Captain Marvel. So it goes time wise, right? And so mm. we just finished the first, we just finished, uh, the Avengers. Um, I, I'd yeah. say a couple of things. One, it's actually been really fun rewatching these movies, especially if having seen Endgame and seeing some of these storylines that I didn't even realize they had set up in the first phase. And there's certain, I, no, isn't that crazy? Like, yeah. You see like, you see like all these little things that they had planned mm-hmm. so far in advance. Well, like. The ending, I never really liked the Captain America the way they ended Captain America. I was, I mean, it never quite sat right with me, partially because I just like him so much as a character and I didn't really want to see it in like that. But when you go back and rewatch Captain America, the first Avenger, absolutely, it is a perfect ending to that storyline. Like, I didn't even realize how perfect it was until I rewatched that movie and I was like, oh my God, this, there was no other way they could have ended it. Very true. And so, yeah, so I would recommend that. But, um, but what's really cool is a lot of these streaming services, like Disney Plus, um, they, they, they actually, all their movies, they've upscaled to Dolby digital vision and, mm-hmm. uh, Dolby Atmos. So if you have it, they will play the movies in Atmos. And like, we watched Thor and I, it was incredible. Like, I'm just like, holy shit. The, I, yeah. I can't even explain it unless you have it. It is mind blowing. It is obviously expensive. I think the cheapest Dolby Atmos bar you can get is like five or 600 bucks. Um, Mm -hmm. all the way up to obviously thousands of dollars, depending on what you want. So it is definitely not for everybody, especially if you're on a budget, there are some cheaper Dolby Atmos bars on a budget that you can look at five, 600 bucks, but that's about the cheapest you're going to get them for. 
But I would highly recommend them. Like, it is... I would highly recommend the Sonos Arc Bar. So if, if you can been, afford it, get it. Yeah. So if you've been uh, refunded your vacation yeah. money, instead of going on vacation, treat yourself and buy a new TV and soundbar. Buy a new soundbar. You know what? You're going to be stuck at home. Don't let anybody tell you differently till at least probably next year. So just... It makes it's it makes logical sense and at this point. I mean, and I can't even wait. Everything has been going on lately. When I get the subwoofer, I will give a full review. But um, the best way I can say it is my friend, like what my friend said, after listening to a movie with Dolby Atmos and the and the Sonos surround sound, like you feel like you need to rewatch every movie you've ever seen in your life. Yeah, it's that cool. But uh, I don't even. Have- so yeah, so no. that's that's what I've been doing. So um, I'm hoping that the uh, I'm hoping that life goes back to normal eventually because I'm just going to be bankrupt if I don't. <laughs> All right, so let's get to. I've rambled long enough. Unless you have something else you want to add, would you like? Would should we get to the questions? Yeah, I was, let me pull up the questions really quick. Uh, as you guys know, if if we're ever going to do something like this, we'll put it up uh, the day of and. If you got anything you want to ask us, and I literally mean anything, we will answer it. So, and uh, and real quick too, if anybody has any ideas for a show, like we've said before, anything you guys like to hear us talk about, a set of movies you like to listen to us to review, uh, or if you just want to every couple of weeks tell you what we've been watching, let us know. We're always up for ideas and for shows. All right. So first question we have from uh, David. And he wants to know, what is the best movie or show you stumbled upon during quarantine so far? Brian, uh, you yeah. kind of talked about you guys were redoing all the Marvel movies and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But what would you say the best movie or show? I think the best oof, best movie or show. Um, I think the best movie I've watched so far during quarantine is we rented uh, Knives Out. Um, it's available free right now on Amazon Prime if you have it. But... Uh, the Ryan Johnson directed way too many good actors in it to even say, but it's uh, it was a freaking fantastic movie. I just watched it two nights ago, oh. and that was literally what I was going to put on. I was going to say Knives Out because it it's it was such an intriguing um, who done it movie. Yeah, it was so well acted, so well done. Like I don't honestly how it didn't like seriously win movie of the year it's the best movie i think i've watched in a long time it was in, it was great i uh you took the one that i was going to talk about so i mine's going to be the same thing it was knives out I mean, we, my wife and i just we were sitting on amazon it's on amazon so we just turn it on and just watched it that night well uh, when i yeah. when i bought my samsung tv i got a free 50 dollar google play credit uh that i still have even though i took my tv back and so we used that to rent it because I didn't yeah. want to pay, I didn't want to wait any longer, but yeah. Wow. Nice. Yeah, right, dude. If you guys have not seen Knives Out, it is even if you don't like murder mysteries, you don't have to. The performances and, and the pacing, the movie is just incredible. It is a really, really good movie. It's good, um, and it is a vicious social commentary on the wealthy right now. It is, yeah. it's genius too. Yeah, it's. It's definitely well worth it if you have Amazon Prime Absolutely. or um, anything like that. It's it's, for, it's on Amazon Prime right now for free. Yes, it's so, free. If you don't have Amazon yeah. Prime, it's worth the rent. Just rent it. Yeah. Uh, what's the TV show? Do you have any TV shows that? Um, what's the best thing? I've actually watched a lot of really good shows. I've been watching. Uh, we've been watching the new Penny Dreadful on Showtime. is really good. It's a it's a slow burn. It's definitely not a binge watch, but it's a. Slow burn, really good. Um, we got caught up on Yellowstone. That's a really good show. I think it's uh, if you have Peacock Network, it's free on Peacock or just it's on cable. Season three just started. Um, I you know I watched we watched on Netflix a really good show that we burned through in probably three days uh, called Black AF. It's by the uh, the same person who did Blackish. Oh okay. It's a, it's eight episodes. It's super breezy and it is really really good. It's super funny. I really liked it. It's on Netflix. Um, so we watch. watching um, Queer Eye. Okay. Uh, we just gave my wife. She she started watching it and she was just laughing and you know smiling. I was like, 
you know, what the, you know, what the heck are you watching over there? Because she was on the laptop. And she's like, oh, I found this on Netflix. I'm like, oh, I kind of wanted to watch that too. So we put it on the TV, and it, it's just a good show to make you smile. Yeah. I, that show that there's there's still like good in humanity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't really see that very often. Oh, the uh, hang on, real quick. The other thing I watched was uh, the last show, probably my favorite show I've watched in quarantine was Discovery, uh, Star Trek Discovery season two. Incredible, I'm, incredible. I got my fake email account so I can try and binge it. Luckily, my buddy had a th- free three month subscription somehow. I don't know, I got it, so he gave me his password. So I blew. I watched Picard, which was really good. I really enjoyed Picard. Um, and I really like Discovery Season 1, but Discovery Season 2 is like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like, first one is like, eh, Season 2 is incredible. It it I would put yeah. it up there with any of the best Star Trek movies or seasons of Star Trek. It is so good. Uh, I, I, I'll I make a fake account. Or I'll find someone who's got a CBS All Access and follow their account. Dude, so. it's, well, and, it, and, it's, and it's a backdoor spinoff of a bunch of new shows that they're going to be doing on CBS. Yeah, do not, that Kirk. Or the Pike one. Yeah, dude, Captain Pike, Pike is Spock. And the new Spock. I like I like this Spock better than Zachary Quinto. I mean, I think this is the best. He's the best. This guy's the best Spock since uh, Leonard yeah. Nimoy. I mean, this is really, it's good. You got just uh, Discovery. Discovery season one's a little weird. Season two is a lot more straightforward, like Star Trek show. And uh, But it's, it's really like the entire last hour of the finale is a giant action sequence with ships shooting, fighting. Like it is, it's more star Wars than star Trek in some ways. I mean, it's, okay. it's, it's good. It's really good. I mean, there's still exploration, but it's really good. And they find in a super clever way to backdoor in why nobody has ever talked about the star Trek discovery crew. Mm-hmm. You got you gotta watch it. You just gotta watch it. Let's go watch it. It's really good. All right. Uh, sorry. Well, I see my friend, we started watching, um, we were, we were looking on IMDb that there's an app. IMDb has an app, so we're looking on it, and we're just kind of going through some shows. And we we found um, Leverage. I don't know if you ever watched that one, um, but it's it's about like the, they're all criminals, um, and now oh. they're, they're they're stealing and doing. You know, is that like an old USA people. show? I think. Guys, it was out like you know ten years ago or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I know what you're uh, talking about. But Mike. So we were like, oh, you know, we're telling my kids, and they're like, oh, well, let's, let's try and watch it. So we watched the first episode, and they, and they turned out to really like it. So we've been, like, like, binging that show as a family. Like, after dinner, you know, we'll watch, like, two episodes. So that's kind of like what we've been watching as a family. Um, but then tonight, we started watching um, The the Floor is Lava on Netflix. Yeah, everybody keeps talking about that. Is it good? Was it, like, a kid's show? <laughs> my kids were laughing so hard. I mean, it, it basically... It's everything what you used to do as a kid. When you jump from the couch onto the pillow because the floor is lava, you know, and you couldn't touch the floor. But this time they have like this bubbling, you know, red looking, hmm. you know, water and stuff. And they're they're going through all these obstacles. It's, it's a great show to watch with your family. Oh, um, let's check it out. And, uh, my kids really enjoyed it. And, and we were just making fun of some people and stuff like that, you know. That's cool. Uh, but it's it's a good show. And they're like, can we try it out in the living room? We're like, all right, we're kind of – maybe not with the dog in here. We'll, we'll, we'll put some pillows over to so, throw – you know, we're you know, just kind of making everything a little more fun. But uh, fun. I think that, that's it for all the shows that I can really Well, I, I do have – I'm going to give a list. I have watched a bunch of movies, so I'm going to give a couple – I'm just going to kind of go through a few, not talk too much about them, but in case anybody's wanting to know – um, I did watch, I think I talked about it before, but Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is available on Stars now. I know it's a little bit, it's been out for a little while, but the Tarantino movie. What? I'm forgetting about that one. Watch it. It it's. I know some people don't like it, but if you, if you watch the movie under the guise of this movie is about the fragile male ego and about, mm-hmm. about how scary, how scared people are of getting older. It, it, the movie's incredible. Like, think of it like that when you watch it, and it's it'll blow your mind. Um, a couple of movies we did rent. I watched the new Vin Diesel Bloodshot, new comic book movie. Um, not good, not bad. It's a lot like a early two thousands superhero movie. It's fine. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I feel like I've watched so much random stuff lately that I can't even remember all of it. Honestly, yeah, it's it's been like that. So I'm, this is this is a few that I do remember watching. So Bloodshot. Is it worth renting? No. Is it worth watching when it's free? Sure. Uh, we watched uh, Underwater, the new Kristen Stewart. I think Kristen Stewart. 
Kristen Stewart movie about underwater alien monsters. Uh, mm -hmm. It's entertaining. It's actually pretty suspenseful, but they spend no time in character development. The movie, like the first two minutes of the movie starts with the thing, the aliens attacking. So when somebody sacrifices themselves or die, you have no vested interest in them. But the movie itself is actually a pretty decent underwater movie. So if you like underwater aliens, I'd say it's worth uh -huh. a watch. Uh, we watched the new Will Smith, Gemini Man. That movie's actually underrated. I really enjoyed that movie. Which one? It's called Gemini Man. It's the one where they clone, somebody clones him, and he's an assassin, and they send his younger oh, version oh, of him oh. after him. I know which one you're talking about, yeah. 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 The special effects are go from either really good to some kind of, kind of wacky, but the movie, I thought the movie was good. I liked it. It was entertaining. Uh, what else did we watch? Oh, a movie you should absolutely not watch under any circumstances whatsoever. Is Artemis Fowl on Disney Plus? It's free and it's fucking terrible. Don't watch it. It is so bad. Right. So bad. We right. skipped that one. Yeah, thank God. Because it's it yeah. looks like it should be a great movie and you watch it and it may it does at no point is the movie even coherent. It's terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Alright. There we go. Uh, what we got? Uh, What's well, next? Thank you, David, for Thanks, your David. question. Um uh, we're gonna. Do we want to do this question from Holly? Yeah, because, because I, think, I have an answer for her. Don't you worry about this. Go ahead and fire it up. More of a rant from Brian um, as a response to this. But uh, she wants to know, uh, what is the worst Brian movie of the week that, uh, we wa that you guys watched during quarantine? So okay. I think Brian said it was that... That Disney Plus movie was the worst one that you guys have watched. Yeah, so a little backstory. My wife likes to call a movie that we watch that I may like that she thinks is dumb uh, the Brian movie of the week. So, like, if I'm like, oh, let's give a movie. A, you know, I like to be adventurous in my movie watching. Like, sometimes I'll just try new things. Sometimes it may be look bad and maybe it is bad. But you know what? Occasionally you just got to give it a try, right? And so yeah. she started labeling these Brian movie of the week. So we're sitting here watching TV and she's like, I'm bored. I want to watch something cheesy tonight. I'm like, all right. Like, like what kind of cheesy? Like, like how about like a nineties cheesy action movie? That's awesome. That's sci-fi. She's like, Oh, that sounds great. What is it? I was like, okay, have you ever seen total recall? And she's like, no. And I'm like, okay, we're going to watch it now. Mind you, I have the 4k remastered director's cut that I personally bought on iTunes this is what she got graced with. Not the crappy VHS version that we got. No, no, this is the best version. And uh, yeah. we watched it, and she could not have been more disgusted with her choice to marry me in her entire life. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? Like, she's like, this is the dumbest, worst movie I've ever seen. And she goes, and I, you're the only person on the planet who fucking thinks this is a good movie. And I'm like, oh, really? So I went to Facebook. Guess who won that battle? Me. Because everybody agreed with me that it's fantastic. Arnold Schwarzenegger is incredible in that movie. Yeah. They had Martian, Mutants. Sharon Stone and, in her prime. And three three boobs. Three boob aliens. ladies. Yeah. And uh, Arnold, like, so many classic Arnold lines. And, and get your ass to Mars. <laughs> or, you know, just him going, Ugh! Oh, man, you know what part and, they finally and, checked out? The part when they were, the shoes like, I was like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. When when Quato shows up, Quaid. That was when she was done. She couldn't. Oh, she hated Quato. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Uh, so you know, I would like to flip the switch on her, and I'd like to say the Holly movie of the week that she made me watch wasn't a classic like Arnold Schwarzenegger's 1990 Total Recall. Oh no, she made me spend my hard-earned money. Well, I mean, my Samsung free credit that I somehow stole from Samsung. She made me spend that money on the new Treasure Island movie. That you can rent right now with Michael yeah. Pina. So you haven't watched that one yet? Oh, no, we watched it. I wish I could delete it from my mind. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. It is so bad. At no point is it scary or even goofy. Like, if you're going to do a bad horror movie, you at least got to make it campy. It's not campy. Like, they try and take it seriously, but it's like... It's like if they want. It's like they try to do like a Charlie's Angel horror Treasure Island reboot. It's real bad. It's fucking terrible. It is not worth the hour and a half of your life. I will never get it back. That was on you, Holly. That was your movie of the week, and you ruined an hour and a half of my life. That's just done forever. It's gone. It's like, you know, like LeBron James does this with the powder. That was an hour and a half of my life. 
in the sky. Well, I think that in order to save your marriage, we should probably move on. Oh, no, no, I'm not done yet. So, and then, you know, who's, who saves the day? Who saves the day? Who picks the next horror movie? Me. A movie called Ready or Not. And you were like, I've never heard of this movie. I'm like, I've heard it's good. It's about a family of people who make games. And if you they, you draw the wrong card, they have to hunt you. I don't want to watch this. Sounds terrible. I've heard it's really good. Let's watch it. Oh, guess what movie was really good? Ready or Not. I picked it. If you like not- horror movies... I mean, it's not even like a horror movie. It's more like Scream, kind of. Like, it's like a thriller. Yeah. It's really good. I highly recommend it. It's not too gory or anything like that. Ready or not. Great movie. Better than Holly's picks. That's Better sure. than Holly's stupid movie of the week. Treasure Island. Dumbest movie ever. Maybe not <laughs> ever. But up there. Top ten. Uh, all right. Well, thank you, Holly, for that wonderful question. Take uh, your ass to the hottest movie of the week section. Yeah. So, uh, I hope she actually listens so that she can take all that constructive criticism. We're trying to force choke my wife, baby Yoda. Yoda, stop it. He's very protective uh, so of me. We had a, another question from uh, Christine. Uh, Ooh, she wants Christine. to know um, that she just finished Solo. Uh, and she wants uh, to know how uh, Tia, oh, how to Tia. Uh, I, I don't want to say fuck. it. I'll say it. Uh, was Darth Maul at the end. And uh, that that was her question. So, Brian is obviously our, Star, our resident Star Wars nerd. So, Brian, would you like to there's, explain? There's no Darth Maul right here, Baby Yoda. You're okay. Darth Maul was at the end of Solo. Every time you say Darth Maul, he gets a little freaked out. <laughs> Um, okay, first of all, I'd like to give uh, Christine a quick shout out. She uh, has been watching all the stars. She realizes she's only seen the original trilogy, and so she's been branching out and uh, watching all the Star Wars movies again. Try new things, Christine. Yes, very good. Um, she, I've had to help help walk help get her through the original prequels because yes, they are real bad, especially if you have no nostalgia for them and you're just watching them as movies. Whew, they're a tough watch. So. Credit to you, yeah. Christine, for following through and continuing to watch them. Um, I did tell her Solo was a much better, was much was a great palate cleanser after Revenge of the Sith to watch because she's been watching them in chronological order. So I hope you liked Solo, Christine. I haven't talked to you since uh, since you watched it, so um, hopefully you did enjoy it. Uh, okay, to answer your question, how did Darth, how the fuck did Darth Maul show up in the end of Solo? So. Uh, this has a lot to do with the Star Wars Clone War. So a lot of the story of a lot of the middle story has been filled out in uh, in and Disney Animation, Star Wars Clone Wars, and Star Wars Rebels, um, and now they're kind of doing it with Mandalorian. But some of the best stories in Star Wars actually have been in these series. Um, I know a lot of people just kind of skip over them because they're cartoons, but I would recommend watching them, um, especially Rebels. Clone Wars is a little bit long, a little bit drawn out. Um, but Rebels is only like three or four seasons. It's only like 20 or 30 episodes and you can get some killer, killer content. Well, it's probably like 50 episodes, but you can get some great storylines. So I would ha- highly recommend Disney plus checking out, uh, at least Star Wars Rebels, but to answer your question. So when Darth Maul was cut in half by Obi-Wan Kenobi, and obviously this is a little bit of spoilers uh, for Darth Maul and some of Clone Wars and Rebels. Um, when Darth Maul was cut in half, he, uh, he was strong with the force. He was able to will himself to stay alive until he could drag himself to a place where he was able to build himself from robot bodies. He got some medical attention. Um, he had, uh, this bottom half was, was robotics and he was able to stay alive. Um, obviously he was not as strong as he once was, but his hatred and his, and his, you know, teachings on the dark side fueled him and allowed him to become stronger to the point where he was able to find his brother, uh, savage oppress and together who was also strong in the force together. They tried to take down the emperor, um, that failed, uh, Savage was killed, and uh, Darth Maul decided to, instead of taking on the Emperor, he decided to um, become the most powerful like uh, black market arms dealer in Star Wars. He took over all the interstellar gangs. Um, he used the Mandalorians. He took over the Mandalorians. Um, he used them all to start uh, Death Watch, basically a mercenary black market group. Uh, also like Crimson Dawn and Solo. That's why he was running them. So... Um, Basically, he became the most powerful gangster in the Star Wars universe, um, where he eventually 
uh, eventually lost out. I don't know how that ends yet because I haven't finished, I haven't finished uh, Clone Wars, but he eventually goes into exile where he, he pops back up and tries to take on a new Padawan with Ezra Miller from Rebels um, because his ultimate goal is to find Obi-Wan Kenobi and exact revenge on Obi-Wan Kenobi, which he tries to do um, in Star Wars Rebels and eventually is killed, actually killed by Obi-Wan Kenobi on Tatooine. And as a two gangster, he's got yeah. gold chains and like gold grills. Yeah, thug life tattoo. Gold tips on his horns. He's uh, got yeah Sith Sith life right across his chest. Um, but yeah. yeah, so when you see him in Solo, he is basically taking over a lot of uh, gangs and become like a, a you know kind of like a job of the hut, a gangster, an underground gangster. So a lot of us who. We're sad that they have not made another solo. We're was hoping they would fill out that story. So it's still a possibility they could flesh it out in a Disney Plus storyline. So there you go. That's right. why Darth Maul is still alive. Basically, Star Wars magic. Yeah, he just becomes the gangster. Because they're stiff. They're 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 space wizards, and they do space wizardy shit. <laughs> so there you go, Christine. That's everything that uh, that you need to know. <laughs> Well, that's all you need to know. Next up, we have a question from Greg. And he wants to know, why haven't you watched Jojo Rabbit? Uh, I I have not watched it. uh, Mainly because I haven't convinced my wife to watch it yet. It's the exact same reason I haven't watched it. Every time I show her the trailer, she's like, this looks so weird. And I'm like... Yeah, it is weird. Oh, but that's why you need to watch it because it's so weird. And I, you know, I want to watch it on my own, but I can't. I don't know about you, but I can't bring myself to pay to rent a movie if I'm just watching it alone. I yeah, that's that's the that's, that's, that's the problem that I have. It's like I, I don't want to. I think I really want to watch it, but I'm just like nudging my wife, and she's like, "Oh no, let's watch this instead." Which, like, okay, fine. Which is really weird because I used to go to the movie store and rent movies and watch them by myself, but now I'm like, nah, I've got all these other streaming services. Yeah. There's got to be something I like, want to watch. I don't want to pay four ninety nine to sit here and watch something by myself. Yeah, like last night I had time to watch a movie by myself. My uh, wife went to bed early, and I, I had an option. I could either rent Jojo Rabbit or for six bucks, or I could for free ninety nine watch Ford versus Ferrari, which I also really wanted to watch. So I watched what? Ford versus Ferrari. It's a good movie. <laughs> uh, you know, I've heard Jojo Rabbit's amazing, and sorry, Greg, I will get to wa- around to watching it at some point. I love Taika Waititi. Uh, it is a little strange, you know, that you're going to be like watching Hitler as an imaginary friend run around. It's kind of strange. I, I think that maybe that's part of the reason why it's like you don't want to be watching by yourself and have somebody come walk into the room and there's like Hitler on the screen. Yeah, and stuff you're like, like go that. Hitler, yeah. go! Woo! And, this, it's a funny Hitler movie, you <laughs> yeah. know, and. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to have to explain anything. I'll get I'll get around to watching it at some point. Greg, stop. All right. Yes. This is a question. Though. Uh, thank you, Greg. Uh, last question we have from Chris. Um, he wants to know uh, who would you have star as Trump in an autobiography? I mean, the easy answer is Alec Baldwin, right? I mean. <laughs> I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to go with the, the Twitter answer hmm. and with that, uh, Sarah Cooper, the, uh, that girl that does like all, like, uh, she, she does all the, uh, voiceover. Oh, nice. Donald Trump. Like whenever he does like a speech or something or, or says something really weird, she just like, you know, and she just, yeah. how about a sock puppet? A sock puppet. How about, I mean, how about we put a little blonde wig on a big steaming pile of shit? Just get an orange yeah. and just put it on top of a table. Ooh, and put googly eyes on it. Yeah, an orange with googly eyes. That piece of shit. What a terrible yeah. president. What a bad leader. Ugh. Yeah. I was listening to a Pete Carroll sports podcast today, and somebody said, America is the equivalent of a sports team that's loaded with talent and has no coaching staff. I was like, doom. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, for, uh, for whatever the most ignoramus, I, we, I'm going to go with sock puppet. I think a sock puppet been way too much time. We, he did not deserve our time. I think a sock puppet would be a great yeah Donald Trump or a Muppet. Give me a Muppet character. Yeah. I'm just going to go with an orange with googly eyes and a, and a little blonde wig. I like that. That's a good one too. We could do that. Mm. I mean, at least the orange has some value. You can eat it and yeah. it would taste good. You can use the, 
the skin for his orange ooh, zest. Ooh, how about the uh, how about we get how about we get the orange orangutan from uh, from what's that Clint Eastwood movie? Risky or ah? Oh. Um, or how about uh, Jan Silent Bob Strike Back? That orangutan, which is gonna orange orangutan, and that will be that will play the president. That hopefully, sounds good. Hopefully, soon to be ex president. Oh. Anyway, tired yeah. of all this fucking winning. Oh. <sighs> He was right about that. I'll give him that. I'm definitely sick of all his winning. So much winning. Not winning. All right. Anyway, uh, I think that's it. That's all we got. Unless you got something else you want to talk about. Oh, just, I don't want to go down that road. No, no. We could do an entire hour about what is so fucked up right now. We're not going to do that. We're going to end on a fun note. So short. And uh, in order to do that, we will ax politics. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for Phase 2. And, uh, Ryan, before we get out of here, can you tell everyone where they can find us? You can find us on YouTube at The Geek Dad Report and Twitter at The Geek Dad Report, where Brian is also Brian West 53 and I am Big Bruiser. We're on Facebook at The Geek Dad Report. And you can find us on iTunes, where I get around to updating stuff. So, uh, we, we do not have an Insta account. We don't have a Snapchat. We do not have a whatever the cool kids are using. We probably are not using it. TikTok. So, they have they have TikTok. Yeah. So find us there. Like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and more importantly, just talk to us because we like talk about nerdy stuff with people we don't know. And if you feel like you need a safe space because you've been in quarantine with your family and they don't understand you. We got your back. We may not understand you, but at least we'll talk to you. <laughs> and won't judge you. But other than that, just stay safe, people. Wear a mask yeah. when you go out in public. Don't yeah, be a wear judge. a mask. Think of it this way. You're not worrying about yourself. You're trying to save somebody else. Yeah. You can be your own little mini hero by just putting on a mask. They're uncomfortable. I got to wear one every day at work. It sucks, but you know what? You're just like Batman. You are just a symbol of hope. That's all you Or are. if you're a bad person, pretend you're like Bane. Bane yeah. War, Bane wore a mask. Yeah. Just walk around. Like, ooh, ooh, ooh. I like to pretend that I'm like a ninja and I'm harder to see when I wear my mask. Yeah. You like slide into like doors like. Yeah. I creep everywhere. Can't even see me. Yeah. But uh, anyway, well, thank you for joining us, everybody. Uh, it's been fun as always. And until next time, stay awesome. And stay nerdy, everyone. And stay Hey, hey, stay alive. Woo. Stay alive. Wear Woo. a mask. Wash your hands. Hands. Don't be. Don't make don't make baby Yoda mad. He'll come after you. All right. Let everyone. <laughs>